And now for the last section, uh, it will be mastered and moderated by Ustrian, a proud alumni from our course. So, <clears throat> good afternoon everyone. Uh, now that we are entering on, on the last session, I'd like to present you my invitees for today. So, Teresa Carreiro, co-founder of Critical Manufacturing, and Pedro Rock, uh, CEO of Email Video. Um, I like to present themselves uh, for two minutes, if you don't mind, and then we'll start with our conversation. Okay, thank you very much for the invitation to be here today. Uh, my name is Teresa Carreiro, I'm the Operations Director of Critical Manufacturing. Uh, previously, I've always worked in software development companies, uh, and I will be um, very happy to share um, my comments about the Peter Fatality here today. Okay. Hello, uh, thank you for the invitation. Uh, I'm happy to be here uh, in, this, in this summit. Um, my name is Peter Rock, I'm 37 years old. Uh, and I, I've been in the, in the IT area for uh, more than 15 years. I've uh, studied uh, in the uh, University of Me. Uh, and uh, then I, I, I have been a developer in some companies. Then I went to uh, a known company called Inegua. Uh, then I went to Wipro. Uh, I've been a, a project manager there. And then I started my own company in 2007. Uh, the company was called Athlete. Uh, I'm still uh, co-founder of, of that company, and uh, after a few years, uh, I created this new company, which is a, a spin-off of, of Adlik, and uh, this company is called uh, Email Beating, and uh, I'm right now the, the CEO of the company, and, and uh, I think that's, that's all. Thank you. So, um, <clears throat> I don't know if everyone is comfortable with the, the pitching principle. I don't know if anyone here knows about it. Does anyone want to? No? Okay. So the principle is the following. Um, it is assumed that <clears throat> when something works, we put it to you know, higher demands until it eventually stops working. This is something that we can see in human resources. So basically, as someone is progressing on their own career, uh, people are you know, elected to a higher position based on work that they do on the lower position. So if you are, imagine, a developer, eventually you'll be promoted to, let's say, a, a team manager it, it, or a team leader. It, it doesn't mean that you are good at leading teams. It actually means that you were very good in your previous position, you know, developing, and now you are promoted to a higher position. At this time, you probably don't know anything about leading teams. So you go and read something about psychology. You remember when you were not leading teams and remember what you wanted to, to the team leader to do or not. And you start to apply that. Eventually, you also become good at that. And then you get promoted again. So the progression here is that eventually, you will come to a position where you start failing. Because you are not doing what you were intended to be doing. And you are not doing what you were uh, trying to be doing. So this is basically the Peter principle, and I, I'll start with Teresa. Uh, what, what do you think, uh, in terms of the Peter principle, is, is this is kind of fad that we are going through, is that everyone wants to be a manager, everyone wants to be on the top of this pyramid. Is that something because, well, we see people doing it, and we also want to do it? Mm -hmm. <coughs> okay, so. First of all, I, I would like to, to clarify that my opinion is based on IT industry, okay, so uh, IT software companies, because I think it's very different from uh, which, which type of company uh, we are talking about. So in modern uh, IT companies, uh, I don't see uh, this, this happening so much nowadays because uh, what I think, uh, and, and it's not meant to be like that. What I see in the modern companies is that people are trained and raised uh, in their careers, in their technical knowledge, and if they want to, or if they're willing to, to change their career for management, 
uh, they can, but if they want to continue their technical career, um, it's also possible for them. So I really think that we have space for both. And what I think is that sometimes we have some kind of pressure from the society, from the companies, that people should not be a programmer at, at the age of 50 or 55. Can you imagine that here in Portugal a programmer or a developer uh, with that age? It's hard to imagine because we don't have it uh, mostly in our companies nowadays. <coughs> I, I found that it was very interesting uh, a few years ago when I started working in a company and I found it very strange to find people, uh, Americans uh, mostly because they were doing uh, an outsourced work. And they were about 50, 55, 60 years old and they were programming. So for me it was, okay, uh, I, I, I cannot say it was a shock but <laughs> almost, uh, uh, because we don't have it here in Portugal. I think that uh, here, uh, since computer uh, science and informatics just is kind of new, uh, it's 20 years of the, the, the engineering uh, computer science uh, course here in, in FILP, so it's uh, kind of new. We are not expecting to see programmers of that age in the companies. Uh, but nevertheless, I think that this will change and uh, probably who wants to develop their career as being a good programmer, uh, they will have that possibility. Yeah. Pedro, um, during... So, during your hirings, um, do you see that recent graduates come to you with a different kind of expectations uh, towards this difference, I don't know, towards the, their notion of their career? Well, uh, yes. Uh, I've seen some difference between uh, when I, I was graduated uh, 15 years ago and uh, I remember that at that time it was, uh, if you ask to the people, how many people wanted to be uh, in their first job as a trainee, who wants to be a uh, project manager, I guess probably 95% of the people that wanted to be uh, a manager in, the, in their first job, of course, they wouldn't have the expertise, they wouldn't have the, they, they didn't know what was that, really, but that what, what was what people wanted. I believe that in the last years, uh, and also because the industry is, is very young, but it's getting more and more uh, information and, and it's, it's getting a little bit more mature, uh, people understand that they, they, they need to understand very well the companies, understand the, the corporate world and uh, eventually move to a management career, which I think it's not uh, uh, necessary. So my idea about this is that uh, probably what we need to do is, is more related with, uh, with the culture. We need to understand that uh, the technical uh, part and the, to be a, a software engineer is something that is, uh, can, can be a career for itself. You don't need to change, or at least this is my vision. I think we, a software engineer doesn't need to, to change to a management career to, to be able to progress, to have a higher salary, to be respected. And I think culturally also, this is uh, changing and the people that comes now from the schools, uh, the recent people, the, the graduates that come now uh, that I interview frequently, I believe have a little bit mis more this perspective of being a good technician, being a good uh, engineer uh, is uh, enough uh, for them to progress within the companies and I think also the companies are, are, are doing the same and creating a way for these people to progress and to be able to, to, to get better benefits, better jobs, and uh, being highly paid for, for being great uh, software engineers. Picking what Teresa said about, about the age, um, it's, it's still very funny for us to think about someone with 60 or 65 years old actually still doing you know, the developer type of career. And the fact is that, as 
we've seen here today, technologies keep moving on. So they, they, the, the, the pace that the new technologies are introduced to the market and the quantity of information that a, an engineer now needs to know in order to perform his job is moving very fast. Do you think that this is something inevitable with the age? Uh, I think the, it will continue to change every day. Every technology companies, uh, not Portuguese companies from the UK market, for instance, have been there for a while. And uh, I've seen in these in this markets and in these kind of companies, people that uh, were like 50-something uh, doing much more technical jobs than I would see uh, in Portugal. In Portugal, I, I know no one with uh, more than say 55 years it doing seems programming. Like they didn't involve in their careers. Yeah, and I think we are still thinking about it. When we get uh, in, in a more mature uh, uh, industry, when the, the industry becomes more mature, I, I believe that it might uh, happen more frequently than it happens today. So I believe it will. It's a, a big question mark because only when it happens we will see the, what's the outcome. But I believe that maybe not as a. Uh, a junior software engineer, but people within the, the, the technical uh, part of the technical path, uh, people can progress and can, and can go to upper levels and contribute a lot and be valuable for their experience, for uh, their, uh, being, uh, bringing added value of the experience they, they get from, from the years they, they are in the industry. Um, so this is basically something that is related to culture. Um, when we're trading emails, you, you mentioned something that also rings, uh, uh, rings very much with the culture, which is women on technology. And you were mm -hmm. saying that maybe there are other forces there that also shape how the career of a woman evolves. Yeah, that's right. Um, I think uh, I've always worked in companies with a lot of men, so uh, always IT companies. So percentage of women from two to eight, 10%, something like that. And what I can see is that probably women in general, they, are, they have more people skills. They are more social, uh, more involved in what's happening around them. Uh, maybe not all, but uh, generically speaking. So what I can see and uh, <coughs> from a lot of companies that they get involved in human resources. They get involved in quality management. Uh, I'm that case, <laughs> actually. Uh, but uh, I think that uh, one of the reasons that uh, they, they do this career shift is mainly because uh, sometimes they are not seen as their peers, as they, uh, from their co-workers, that they are capable technically, uh, or uh, as they are, uh, as capable as men are. Uh, so if you have a girl and a boy, most of the times, and they do uh, share the same level of, of expertise, probably, uh, since this is still a men's world, uh, you will value more the work of the guy. So, um, and, if, and if they are not that good, I imagine a girl that it's not such an expert. So they probably will tend to, and because also of these people skills, they will tend to diverge from uh, computer engineering uh, basics and will go to more social um, careers that probably uh, they will have in the company. Yeah, yeah I, I really think that still in Portugal uh, we are in in this phase because I can see in a lot of companies and you can take a look around or just asking your company that you will probably have a lot of testers or quality related or human resources persons that have an IT background but they don't do not program anymore so yeah and Teresa just uh, something I think this is not only in Portugal. This situation yeah. happens, uh, I think, all over the world. And when we look to the Silicon Valley and we think everything is great there, uh, they are still having this kind of discussion around there because uh, women in the IT still, even in, in entrepreneurship, uh, women are, are, don't have 
probably the same uh, opportunities that men get because we still may have some uh, misconceptions about about that. So in Portugal, eventually, it is even more. Yes, yeah, since than in we America. are very yeah. far behind still. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So um, in terms of culture, I mean, we have a problem with women joining technology. Um, much earlier, right? We have that problem when uh, only about 10%, I think, of the, the population that joined this year, the, the master's degree in informatics here, only about 10% are women. But <clears throat> if, if we even look at the bigger picture, uh, we actually see uh, the number of people join, actually joining engineering, science, technology, and mathematical courses all over the world. It is decreasing. And some of the studies that I've read point out that in the next 15 years, we'll have a deficit of around 40 to 80 percent, it depends on the study, of um, technical resources. Mm -hmm. And we were talking uh, two days ago uh, about this, and you were saying, well, it's amazing because right now, with the culture that we have, sometimes programmers, or let's call it software engineers, are even looked at rock stars, right? Mm -hmm. So the salaries are going up. The benefits are going up, and still people don't want to join this. Is, is there something that we can do about this? Well, I think we are, we are currently doing. Uh, I think uh, because of the, the Steve Jobs of this world, the uh, Bill Gates of this world, uh, I've seen a, a news this week that uh, uh, Madame Tussaud uh, is, is, putting, is selecting which is the next uh, big, big celebrity to put there, and the, the guys are. Uh, Steve Wozniak, Steve Jobs, uh, uh, Mark Zuckerberg. So, I think right now the, the IT world is being exposed, and uh, we start to create some stars. And uh, I think this is a good, a good, a good way to to make this uh, visible to everybody that uh, there can be like rock stars in uh, in the IT. And uh, so people might follow this because we always need to have uh, uh, models to follow. And I think this is uh, currently happening. Of course, there are too many other things that we need to do to, to make sure that we, we don't get this kind of shortage in terms of the people that are in the industry. And uh, the university is important in this. So uh, I think because people, uh, I believe this here in uh, in this university, you had like uh, eight people for uh, eight people applied for for the for the engineers informatics, and just one was uh, from from these eight people, just one was, was selected, right? I think the number is more or less like that. So this means that people are are trying to get into this. People are aware that this is a, a job with with future. And uh, I think uh, there are a lot of, of uh, the companies themselves are trying to get organized to, to bring um, some way to convert people that are currently like uh, civil engineers or uh, in the mathematics areas that are unemployed, some are unemployed, to convert them into the, the IT area. So I believe this is a trend and this will continue to, to happen in the future. Yeah, I think that that needs to happen because we are short of people, right? So we really need more more persons and... Uh, do you also feel that on critical manufacturing? Do, do you feel a, a kind of um, effort that we are now putting on in terms of trying to find resources? And now it comes out that I mean, it used to come, you know, five or ten years ago. Yes, it's, it's quite harder, but I think that they have the world outside. So it's very hard for us uh, in the Portuguese market to really um, capture, and, and people don't, they don't have afraid of going out and uh, experience uh, who leaves the university, for instance, this year, why should they stay here? What does Portugal has to offer? They have a whole world uh, outside, so it's very hard for us to really um, 
to really sustain our jobs and, and salaries that we can afford to pay uh, as startups or as small companies. Uh, mm -hmm. with, with the good engineers that we really have. So if you're good, uh, when you go out of, of your degree, if you're good, probably you will uh, have a bigger salary outside. So, and uh, aligning this, uh, this the, the bigger salary in the world outside uh, with shortage of, of people um, in, in the degree. So I, I really think that uh, we need to do something. Uh, one of the things could be also provide other, other kind of students with computer engineering uh, tools and, and, and training. So that, that should be one way. So the world happened, basically. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, um, I, I, we are already in 20 minutes into the session. I'll open this to uh, any questions that we may have from the audience. Uh, so if someone wants to ask something, just please. Yeah, there's someone there. Hi. Um, so regarding the, the Peter fatality that um, uh, we were discussing, we, we talk, uh, Teresa told about uh, programmers in uh, the US with 50 something. Uh, Pedro also seen this outside. Um, and uh, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, I think that currently in Portugal basically we have the developer ladder and then uh, you get to a, a team lead level uh, and then uh, you have the project manager. Um, I don't know if outside uh, they have the same, but how do you how do you think that a developer with in the 50s somethings house will feel uh, that he is at the top of his level, but basically his wages, uh, looking at Portugal, of course, uh, way lower than than the project managers and probably not even the top ones. Uh, I don't know if anyone. Thanks. Pedro, do, do you believe that the current wages are still that disproportional? Is that really true that a developer today still earns less here in Portugal than a project manager? Well, uh, I would like to say no, but the truth is uh, it, it's still happening, but I think it's changing. So, uh, and, and many of the companies are, what they are trying to do is uh, trying to create a way for, for their employees not to have to move to the management, but keep as uh, engineers, as technical people that will not be every day doing uh, um, sometimes bureaucratic stuff, sometimes uh, human resources related stuff and uh, companies are aware of this problem and uh, I've seen this in all, some of the companies that I've been through and uh, what happens is that uh, this is changing and uh, the companies are, are making it possible for uh, someone in a, in a technical area to move much, much uh, higher position and uh, make sure that the, the, the wages and, and the benefits that they get and also the social uh, important, importance that these people get uh, is, uh, I wouldn't say the equivalent because this is not true right now, but I think the, 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 the progression goes in that direction. So. I think this is getting better for the technological people. Yeah, I do agree with that because um, I know uh, companies, uh, mine is one of them, that, that are really building their career plan with different types of careers. And while you uh, keep climbing the stairs, uh, you can keep climbing uh, until your extreme technical logical point that you can really uh, you're so expert that you beat all the managers uh, so I, I, I think that is something that we can see in, in companies like uh, mine or maybe Pedro or maybe Bleep or Farfetch whatever that uh, we do try to have technical careers where people have the same benefits, the same salary package, uh, so they don't have to give up from their technical expertise and become a manager. Uh, so they can 
um, be promoted to their level of expertise until they don't know uh, how to overcome the next uh, programming language uh, that it's trending right now. So I, I think that uh, we will go for there. Yes. Um, whenever we talk about this, it always seems that it's always for the benefit of the people, but I wonder if it's not also for the benefit of the company, right? Oh, yes, of course. Uh, companies don't do nothing <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> that are not for their own benefit. Yes, because the, they also would like to have and, and really have these people, these, these experts, technical experts, uh, to sell to the customer. You know, uh, for instance, uh, critical manufacturing, we do have some, some kind of services that we sell to uh, Germany, big manufacturers, uh, semiconductors and electronics and so on. So basically in this kind of, of sector we are competing against Chinese, or I'm sorry if there's uh, it's nothing against Chinese, but, uh, but we do have to have technical guys, experts, that can compete <coughs> and bring more advantage and bring uh, ideas uh, that will really um, make us have uh, an, uh, an advantage regarding the other uh, our competitors. So it's really helpful, for, uh, useful for the company to have this technical expertise. Is this more true on a startup? Um, in a startup, uh, it's very important that well. In a startup, sometimes people do everything they need yeah. to do. So. Uh, the expertise comes with uh, when the startup starts to, to grow and uh, people get m more expert in a certain area. Usually uh, in a startup, in a small startup, uh, people do whatever they need to do and they get uh, uh, very quickly some, uh, some uh, skills that usually they would take much more time if they are doing every day the same kind of job than they, they would. So um, I think it's a bit different between uh, what can happen in, in, a, in a startup and a, in a more established uh, company. But uh, I believe the importance of, of the, the expertise and the, the deep knowledge of, of the subjects is, is really the key for the companies to be able to create more value and also to be able to distribute the value that they, they can capture it from, from the market to also to their employees. Uh, this means better remuneration. I think we have still time for one more question. Um, I have a question pertaining to the developers themselves. So let's imagine that we have a developer who's devoted, say, 10 years to a house. For example, critical manufacturing, whatever, doesn't matter. And uh, for some reason, the company goes down. And um, other companies typically find that younger developers are easier to mold to their, um, their necessities, uh, whilst more experienced people uh, have those specific uh, areas of expertise and are valuable in that section. So in that case, um, when a developer chooses to go solely for the um, technical career, isn't that also a disadvantage for him? Uh, if for some reason he has to go from one company to another, he has to transform himself completely in uh, many cases. How does that work? In your opinion, how uh, can a professional uh, adapt himself to keep his, um, keep his career, keep his lifestyle, and improve if possible? Okay, so, so uh, if I understood correctly, your question is about if, if a senior uh, engineer, software engineer, uh, just uh, don't have a job anymore and he's trying to find a new job, yeah. how can he cope with the situation that he had had before? Exactly. Yeah. Okay, th th that, that one is really hard because uh, junior guys are cheaper than senior guys. Uh, although senior guys are more expert than junior guys. So, 
so it really depends on the maturity of the company and uh, what they are looking for. I think that in Portugal uh, we do have a place for, for, for senior guys because we do have, uh, the companies are, are growing. Uh, we have a, a lot of, and, and we are going to demanding markets and, and so on. So we have room for, for senior guys, not that much, but, but we do have. And, and the guy, uh, he really needs to be really good to earn the same that he earned before without um, the current company don't really know how good he is you know, because it's a new company. So you really need to sell yourself. And um, yeah, but, but it's difficult. And uh, I, especially here in Porto, but if you think about Portugal, he probably he will find something. Maybe he will need to sacrifice some of the lifestyle that he usually had. So I think it's my... Uh. I would say that uh, first place, in, and particularly in this in this area, uh, there are no more uh, job for life. So, uh, whenever uh, someone is in this area, in the, in the IT area, uh, for uh, let's say 10 years or 15 years, it's very unlikely that he's only in one single company. Probably even in one, two, three companies. And I think that this is also important. Uh, because uh, it, it can be expert in some technologies, but uh, it will get different experience from different companies, and this might help people that get into some situations where, for instance, a company closes, to make sure that uh, he has uh, some different skills, he, he has seen different cultures, and he, he can bring more added value when he goes to another company. So what I'm saying here is, uh, I believe that the, if people think about their career, uh, if they really think about the way they, they manage their career uh, and in, a, in, a long, in the long term, uh, they should be aware that that can happen and a way to, to minimize the impact of, of uh, such a thing. Uh, is exactly to get uh, experience and expertise, not only one single technology, one single uh, perspective, one single company, but to have a different uh, experience and a more vast experience to be able to, to easily get uh, a new job, to move to a new company, uh, and uh, doing that easily. Or creating a, his own company. Or creating his own company. Which is okay. even better. Well, thank you. I think we are running late. I think that it's, it's a good wrap up. We, more than ever, we need to think and be keen of our career, to talk with other people, try to understand what they are trying to do, try to sell ourselves, try to work and invest in ourselves in order to not become incompetent at our job. Yeah. So thank you, Teresa. Thank you, Pedro. Thank okay. you all. Thank you.